Welp, this is it. The grand finale. Hello everyone, welcome back to my U.S. National Park tier list series. This is the third, <laughs> technically fourth, installation in a three-part series. In this video, I will be discussing the S-tier parks, the parks that I consider to be the cream of the crop. Watching the previous parts of this series is not required in order to watch this video. Watch the first part of this series, of course after watching this video, if you want to know my criteria for judging each park. These were the parts that I covered in the previous parts, and this is their placements in the tier list. If you like this series and want to see similar content in the future, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Any little bit of contribution means a lot to me. With that being said, let's get straight into this video, starting with things. Before we get started, I want to do a quick disclaimer. Glacier Bay was supposed to be in A tier, but I forgot to add it in the video, so I'm just going to say here that Glacier Bay is A tier. Sorry for not including it in the last video. Let's actually get started with the S tiers. Yosemite National Park in California. Our first S tier and my 10th favorite national park. I've actually visited this park, so I've gotten to know this park really well. The main drawing factor of this park is the valley, and I would have to say that the valley is incredibly beautiful. You have to see it with your own eyes in order to truly appreciate it, because no picture will ever do it justice, but it is beautiful. Just in general, the park just has a lot of flavor. There's a lot of cool waterfalls, a lot of cool rock structures. There's a lot more to the park than just the main valley, so if you do a lot of exploring, you'll find something that's truly beautiful. But I just think that Yosemite is a really great park, and that's why I'm putting it in the S tier. Hawaii Volcanoes National Park in, you guessed it, Hawaii. This is my ninth favorite national park, and it is also the only park where you can see an actively erupting volcano. This park includes the volcano known as Kilauea, which is one of the most active volcanoes on the planet. It spews lava constantly, and it's actually a dangerous national park, so be careful if you go there. The park also includes Mauna Loa, one of the tallest points in Hawaii, and impressive rainforest environments. This park is in S tier. Sequoia National Park in California. My eighth favorite national park. Trees! This time, however, the trees are really, really big. In fact, the largest tree in terms of size is found within this park. Additionally, this park also includes the tallest point in the contiguous United States known as Mount Whitney. I'm gonna have to say that Sequoia is not only the best park in California, but also an S tier. Olympic National Park in Washington State. My seventh favorite national park. This park includes so many different eco-regions, from the jagged rocky coast, to the luscious primeval forest, to the alpine meadows, and finally, capping it off with Glacier Peak Mountains. This park provides so much in what is really a very small area. I have nothing but respect for this park. Absolutely an S tier. Kobuk Valley National Park in Alaska. My sixth favorite national park. Despite the fact that this park is S tier, I don't really have many things to say about it. It has some very nice dunes and some very nice mountains. However, Kobuk National Park's main draw is that it's almost entirely allocated to wilderness. Kobuk Valley is just a beautiful park that not many people know about, so it's an S tier. Grand Canyon National Park in Arizona. My fifth favorite national park. I am almost positive that you are aware of this park. That is because this park is the most famous canyon in the world. Arguably the most famous individual landform in the world. The Grand Canyon was carved out of the earth over the course of millions of years by the Colorado River. The effect of this molding is a nearly endless labyrinth of colorful rock walls. 
The canyon also hosts an impressive range of wildlife. Overall, this park deserves all of the praise and attention that it receives. S tier. Denali National Park in Alaska. This is my fourth favorite national park. For those that don't know, Denali Mountain is the tallest point in not just Alaska, not just the US, but the entirety of North America. And I have to say for myself, seeing it, it sticks out at you like a sore thumb. Granted, that's if you can see it. Most people who go, since most people go in the summer, traditionally can't see it. But since I went in May, I actually got to get a really good look at the mountain, and I just have to say, it is very impressive. Denali is also mostly wilderness, meaning that there are no human-made structures in the vast majority of the park. I have to give this park an S tier. Wrangell St. Elias National Park in Alaska. This is my third favorite national park. Additionally, this is the largest park in the country. It is so large that it is actually bigger than some individual states within the country. Most of that space is actually filled by glaciers. Another interesting fact about this park is that it's technically a continuation of another park within Canada, meaning that it's actually even bigger. And so it contains some very impressive glaciers, it protects some nice wilderness, and there's some nice human-made spots within the park as well. I just have to give this park a nest here. Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. This is my third favorite national park and arguably the most famous park in the country. You probably know what this park is. I've actually been to this park so I know how famous it is because God there are so many tourists in this park. It is ridiculous. Yellowstone, man. It's just an iconic park. Old Faithful, all the different types of hot springs. Fun fact, this park contains 50% of all the geysers and hot springs in the world. That's ridiculous. And additionally, this park is hosts an insane amount of nature, an insane amount of wildlife, and I just have to say that this is the best park in the contiguous U.S. Just so happens that this is also one of the first national parks in the country, and also just one of the first national parks in general. I have to give this park an S tier, there's no better place for it. And then, there was only one. The last park. My personal favorite national park of not just the US, but the entire world. If you're a national park nerd like myself, you already know what the park I'm going to say. For the rest of you, I guarantee that this is going to be the first time that you've heard of this park. Before I reveal what my favorite park is, I would like to take a very quick intermission to do my annual setup tour. For the uninitiated, I do a tour of my setup every anniversary to celebrate the channel's creation. It's a tradition that I started two years ago, and I hope to continue it into the foreseeable future. Since I know you guys are here for the national parks, I'm not going to waste your time with this. Without further ado, here is my current setup in 3, 2, one and here it is all right uh, you've already seen most of this stuff so i'm gonna make this quick so basically chair is the same i use this towel because this stuff makes my back hurt keyboard's the same mouse pad's the same monitor's the same speakers are the same can't see them but they're there our headphones are the same and computer is the same but this time i have to use these rubber bands because this fan keeps falling off there's really only two new parts to the setup. That is my microphone and this mouse. So this microphone, uh, it's a, uh, I don't know what it is specifically. I'll put up all information in the description if you're wondering. But yeah, I use this microphone while I'm streaming. It's okay. Sometimes it, the uh, audio can get a little scuffed. Demo, this is a demo of how scuffed it sounds. Audio demo, this is scuffed, right? But other than that, I like it, even though it did get a little dented. I don't know if you could see that, but 
It got a little dented. Unlucky. While I'm recording for audio, I like to put a shirt over it to muffle any noise, white noise. It works good enough. But yeah, like the microphone. Secondly, we have this mouse. Now, I actually got this mouse very recently, like only about a week ago. That's because my old mouse, which is over here, this mouse right here, which was originally using, it, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's like something loose inside of it. It is broken. So, I use this mouse now. Again, all information will be provided in the description. I don't really want to go over it now, but yeah, I like it. It's a little more lightweight. I can actually right click. Uh, the scroll wheel works. Yeah, it's just a mouse. I like it. Cool. Anyways, that's enough about this setup. Let's go back. Yeah! And that was my setup. I hope you guys liked it. By the way, sorry for it being completely scuffed. I try my hardest. Enough about my setup, though. Let's finally get into what I consider to be my favorite U.S. national park. It is... Gates I mean, <clears throat> Gates of the Arctic National Park in Alaska. Yep. This is my favorite national park. Some of you might be wondering, but Naisu, why is this your favorite national park? And here's how I would respond. This is the purest park in the country. It is fully dedicated to one mission, and that is to protect the Alaskan wilderness. There's no strings attached, there's no caveat. It is just 100% dedicated to nature and also it is cool it's the most northerly national park in the country it hosts part of the largest caribou migration in the world and just in general if you take a look at it there is an insane amount of biodiversity that can be found here that you probably don't even know about because it's so far north additionally this is the least visited national park in the country which means, if you go here, you'll have room to make an adventure. You won't be interrupted by a giant crowd of tourists. You won't be messed with by rangers or policemen or whatever. It's so big, you can find your own corner of this park and just explore it. By yourself, probably wouldn't want to do that because, I mean, I wouldn't want to be alone in nature, but... If that's what your desire is, that is what you can do in this part. And that is why I have to give it an S plus tier. And with that, I have finally completed my U.S. National Park tier list. Thank you to everyone who watched this series. Even through all the highs and lows. Even though I would consider the national parks that I've covered in this video to be must-see parks, I would still highly recommend visiting the lower parts as well. Every national park, besides the one, will provide you with an experience that you will never forget. If you enjoyed this series and this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel in order to catch up with any of my other uploads. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye!